This Week in Louisiana Agriculture. I'm Avery Davidson in Plaquemines Parish where the people here have won the battle against the bug. These pigs from the LSU swine farm could possibly save your life. I'm Kristen Oaks and I'll tell you how coming up. And in Holly Clegg's Trim and Terrific Kitchen, Holly and AJ get you ready for Halloween and tailgating season with some delicious Louisiana beef. Hello everyone, I'm Michael Dana. Thanks so much for joining us. The citrus industry is a $10 million a year economic engine for Plaquemines Parish. Not only do the 100 or so citrus growers there provide you with the sweetest satsumas and oranges around, they also grow trees for our yards and gardens. But that economic engine nearly came to a halt after Hurricane Katrina because of an invasive insect pest called the citrus psyllid. This week in Louisiana Agriculture's Avery Davidson now shows us how farmers and government officials there are united to eradicate this costly pest. That you can look at the color of it there and see that it's going to be really good. Ricky Becknell takes pride in his citrus crop. A fifth generation citrus grower, his family has been growing satsumas and oranges in Plaquemines Parish since 1850. For a brief moment, Becknell thought his livelihood could be destroyed by this little bug, the Asian citrus psyllid. When this new psyllid bug uh, hit, I mean, it changed everything. The psyllid can carry a disease called citrus greening, which prevents fruit from ripening. After Hurricane Katrina, state and federal inspectors found it in Bell Chase and called a meeting with growers and issued a quarantine order with this message. We're sorry that it's coming into this area and it's pretty much there's nothing you can do other than watch it to come in and take over your parish. But for the people of Plaquemines Parish, tragedy has become pretty much the norm. With Hurricane Katrina, the oil spill, Fighting the citrus psyllid, well, that was just another day out in the orchard. We looked at it as an opportunity to fight what was coming at us. And, and one of the things down here, and I have to compliment President Nungesser as well as did Ricky, in that failure was not an option in this case. Director of Coastal Management P.J. Hahn says the parish government and farmers united to begin aerial spraying for the psyllid. They plotted every citrus tree in the parish on a map and even worked with Bayer to create this tablet approved for residential application to kill the psyllid on individual trees for up to one year. If we've learned to go and adapt. We can, we can do it. Uh, there, it's, there it's doable. Uh, and so far, uh, there it's worked for us. Becknell says even the USDA cannot find a single citrus psyllid in Plaquemines Parish because of their efforts. Han says the next step is to destroy any potential hiding places for the bug. We're going to talk to the, the folks that own citrus trees that are no longer caring for those trees and see if we can't remove those trees from the property. To keep the citrus industry alive in Louisiana for generations to come. In Plaquemines Parish, I'm Avery Davidson for this week in Louisiana Agriculture. Now, Han says even USDA inspectors could not find a citrus psyllid in Plaquemines Parish following their spray efforts. Regardless, the parish remains under a quarantine when it comes to the shipping of citrus trees. The LSU Ag Center's Swine Farm does more than just help students learn about raising food animals. It also helps with medical research for you and me. Last week, we told you about the LSU Ag Center's plans to shut down its swine unit or possibly transfer its operation to the LSU College of Agriculture. This week in Louisiana, Agriculture's Kristen Oaks now shows us what could be lost if the swine unit closes. Not many college guys have a special relationship with a 700 pound boar named Puddin, except for Brendan Terry. Well, it's not often you can do what you love, especially being a student. Since his freshman year, Terry has cared for Puddin and the other pigs here at the swine unit on the LSU Ag Center's Ben Hur Research Farm. But just like his fellow co workers, closing the swine farm means Terry will be out of a job. Pretty devastating. Uh, you know, after working here for three years, uh, you know, you get a little attached to it. Terry says the pigs here are more than just pets. They're teaching tools. They use our pigs for uh, medical research. You know, they train doctors to work on pigs because their uh, body anatomies are so close to humans. Swine unit manager Rebecca Lorette says they supply pigs to the Tulane, Oshner, and LSU Sciences Medical Schools for pre-med studies. Down in Tulane, we've worked out um, and been able to supply them with pigs that train doctors. You know, they're able to train physicians at Oshner's to use equipment 
that can save lives. LSU Ag Center researchers even collect blood samples from newborn piglets for human stem cell research. And they do that with our pigs because our hogs are healthy, they're consistent, we can supply them. We try and benefit them and help them for the good of us all. Lorette said the farm also supports the few swine breeders left in the state. We want to better understand how people can raise hogs in open fields, how people can raise hogs conventionally. There's many different ways to skin a cat and we're just trying to find ways where these small producers can make more money with the resources that they have. And they look to us for guidance and support and help. From bacon to med school, pigs like Puddin use their lives to support yours. In Baton Rouge, I'm Kristen Oaks for This Week in Louisiana Agriculture. Dr. Kenneth Koontz, who is the Dean of the College of Agriculture at LSU, says the college will hopefully have a plan in place to save the swine farm by the end of this year. Well, if you think beef prices are high now, a proposed USDA ruling could make that hamburger or steak cost you even more. But there is something you can do about it. You can tell the USDA how you feel about a ruling that calls for better tracking of beef cattle. Right now, ranchers track the origin and sale of their animals through a number of ways. Under the proposed rule, ranchers who move their cattle or other livestock across state lines would have to make sure their animals are officially identified with the USDA and send documents such as interstate certificates of veterinary inspection or an ownership or statement with the animal. USDA officials say this will help trace animals should an outbreak of disease occur. Dr. Mac Lee with the Louisiana Farm Bureau Livestock Advisory Committee says ranchers do have some concerns, especially about cost. So it's a matter of logistics, uh, the numbers that are going to be involved, uh, the, again the cost, uh, and just exactly how are we going to be able to get this done uh, in, an, in an economical, quick uh, way uh, that won't work a hardship on the producers uh, or the cattle for that matter. Now the USDA's Animal and Plant Health Inspection Service has extended the comment period to December 9th. If you'd like to send the USDA a comment about the proposed rule, you can do so by clicking on the link on our website at twilatv.org. Louisiana seafood connoisseurs now have a new online tool to find out how safe Louisiana Gulf seafood is all at the speed of your mouse. GulfSource.org lists the seafood, sediment, and water testing data compiled by four state agencies. The site allows users to see nearly 330 samples of shrimp, crab, and fin fish taken from areas impacted by last year's Deepwater Horizon oil spill disaster. Olivia Watkins with the Louisiana Department of Wildlife and Fisheries says the website gives consumers the information they need to make good food choices, while at the same time promoting the safety of Louisiana Gulf seafood. We want to make sure people feel empowered, they have information and the tools at their disposal to make decisions about what they're consuming. That's very important to us. You know, in a, in a society where a lot of people are turning to Whole Foods and, and other um, companies that promote healthy, sustainable foods and things of that nature, we want to make sure that just as you can go to Whole Foods and look up um, nutritional information on the things you get out of the dry good bins. We want to make sure that if you're eating, a, you're eating seafood from the Gulf, you understand what the chemical composition of some of the polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons or those PAHs are, um, if they're there at all, in the seafood and the water and the sediments. GulfSource.org has been funded as part of an $18 million grant from British Petroleum as part of the Louisiana Seafood Safety Plan to test the seafood across the Gulf Coast. To find out more about Gulf Seafood and this latest food safety effort, you can visit our website at twilatv.org. Drought conditions throughout most of the summer affected yields of Louisiana's soybean and cotton crops. Toby Blanchard reports that despite these challenges, yields are not that bad. Farmers are close to wrapping up their soybean and cotton harvest. Harvest conditions have been ideal for both crops, but the growing season was not. Soybean farmers suffered more than $100 million in losses because of drought, flooding, and increased irrigation costs. Some farmers couldn't plant a crop because of adverse weather conditions on both extremes. What is being harvested is better than expected. If we look at our yields, uh, they've been fairly good. They're not uh, high yields. We're probably going to average somewhere around 36 bushels per acre, which is, uh, is a good yield for Louisiana. Levy said farmers planted slightly more than a million acres across the state. Insect and disease problems were light in most areas, but the disease Cercospora did affect some acres. In the southern part of the state, we did have a lot of Cercospora that came in late, uh, and it affected yields. 
Levy said the disease reduced yields by half in some fields. Drought damage to cotton was around $26 million, and yields have been mixed with differences between irrigated and non-irrigated cotton fields. Irrigated yields have been consistently around uh, two bales and more than two bales in, in general, and in the uh, non-irrigated fields, it's, it's really spread out. Cruz expects that the crop will average around 850 pounds per acre, less than farmers would have hoped for. Commodity prices are still strong for soybeans and cotton, which can help farmers make a profit even with lower yields. For This Week in Louisiana Agriculture, this is Toby Blanchard with the LSU Ag Center. Most commodities here in Louisiana were affected by the drought. Dry weather will likely also have an impact on the crops at farmers plant in 2012. Still to come on This Week in Louisiana Agriculture, a fall favorite, Sloppy Joe's, takes center stage in Holly Clay, Trim and Truthy Kitchen. But first, Kristen Oaks goes hog wild in this week's Ag Minute. Stay with us. It is now time for this week's Ag Minute, and of course joining us is Kristen Oaks. And, and Kristen, I know over the last couple of weeks on the program, we've been talking about the possible closure of the LSU swine unit, and as a result, that's kind of given us a focus on one aspect of animal agriculture here in Louisiana we just really haven't seen a lot of. Well, you know, Mike Pork is not a big player in the ag industry, but if you ask anyone at the LSU Research Farm, they'll likely disagree. Recently, I've spent a lot of time at the swine unit, and the folks there taught me a thing or two about these very interesting animals. Winston Churchill once said, I like pigs. Dogs look up to us, cats look down on us, but pigs treat us like equals. And he was probably right. He said this because pigs are extremely intelligent creatures. In fact, they're the fourth most intelligent animal behind chimpanzees, dolphins, and elephants. So you say you sweat like a pig. Probably not. Pigs don't have sweat glands, except in their snout. And those snouts serve them well. Pigs have an extremely well-developed sense of smell. That's why they were trained to root for truffles underground. Most people think pigs wallow in the mud because they're dirty animals. But actually, they're just trying to keep cool. Did you know pigs were one of the first animals to be domesticated for food? Last year, the pork industry served up more than $34 billion to the nation's economy. And today, pork is the world's most widely eaten meat. And that's no hogwash. Now, even though the swine industry has declined in the state, Louisianians still celebrate the swine festival every November in the town of Basile. Now moving on to this week's Twyla Trivia. Last week's question was about the legend of Johnny Appleseed and what was Johnny's real name? And the answer is A, John Chapman. Now for this week's question, which U.S. state produces the most pork? Is it A, North Carolina, B, Minnesota, or C, Iowa? Log on to our website, twilatv.org, submit your answer, and we'll send you a copy of Holly Clegg's cookbook just in time to find out what Holly and AJ are cooking this week. And we are going to do that soon. I have to tell you, I'm thinking it's Iowa, but I'd have to bet that it's probably not Iowa because that's the first state I think about when I think of Holly. I guess you have to wait and see. We'll have to wait. Kristen Oaks, thanks. Well, this week we are back in Holly Clegg's Trim and Terrific Kitchen, where this month the focus is on fall and football. It's a recipe featuring delicious Louisiana beef, sure to score you some points at your next tailgating event. Holly Clegg's Trim and Terrific Kitchen is brought to you by the Louisiana Crawfish Promotion and Research Board, Louisiana Crawfish, Ask Before You Eat, and by the Louisiana Rice Promotion Board, Rice, a world of great ideas, and by the Louisiana Beef Industry Council. Beef, it's what's for dinner. Kitchen facilities provided by the Around Town Television Show. Hey there, everyone, and welcome to Holly Clegg's Trim and Terrific Kitchen. I am AJ Sabine, of course, with Holly Clegg. And Holly, it's October. 
people are wanting to get that little comfort food. It's Halloween's around the corner. You've got some great sloppy joes for us here a today, Absolutely, right? and you said it perfectly. Everybody's busy. I know for Halloween, I have to have something quick to make. This is perfect for that. If you have people watching football, this mm. is perfect for that. It'll feed those men. It's sort of hearty, and it's simple to make. I always keep ground meat in my freezer. Absolutely. One in one pound packages, and as y'all know, I've told you, I use ground sirloin, which is the leanest cut of meat. So always mm -hmm. look for your meat in a loin or around. So pull this out of the freezer so you can whip this up instantly. And speaking of beef, did you know, folks, that uh, beef is the number three source of zinc beside, beside uh, feed grains. So this is a, a wonderful source of uh, vitamins and minerals. For, and for of course, everyone. it only works with Louisiana beef. You have to Absolutely. remember that. But another thing, you could absorb iron quicker with beef than any other way. So there's a lot of great reasons to eat uh, meat besides that I just like it. So quick and easy is what I'm about. This is just tomato sauce. And if you're watching your salt intake, you could always use a low sodium. Okay. A little paprika adds sort of a little smoky flavor to it. And uh, no, I already had the ice. You I'm glad you onions? said that. We sauteed our onions and our ground beef already. Okay. Thank you for reminding right. me. And then Sloppy Joe's always have sort of like that barbecue sweet flavor to it. Mm -hmm. So we're adding a little brown sugar. And so that's sort of your sauce. It has that savory and sweet. Sugar, is that like kind of like the secret ingredient? Well, we can make it that our secret <laughs> ingredient. Yes, yeah, so easy to do. You just whip this up and it's a kid favorite, adult favorite, and it's fun to make easily. And I like to add a little corn. You don't have to put my twist to everything I do. So of course. This is a little frozen corn. And now corn, that's a really cool ingredient because I know my kids, they like Sloppy Joes and they can't wait to have like a little corn of the cob or something like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. So that's a great way to integrate it into the recipe. Absolutely. So that is done. Now we need something to serve with our Sloppy Joes. And yes. I love this salad. It's a broccoli salad, but it has such great flavors in it. It has mm -hmm. cranberries, red onions, carrots. Uh, again, pretty much pantry friendly ingredients. And of course, always the secrets in the dressing. and. A lot of fat and a lot of uh, you know calories come from dressing, so I think one of my trim and terrific talents is to make a lower you know fat dressing. This is just a little reduced light mayonnaise. Now, mm -hmm. if you only have mayonnaise at home, it's fine. Use it. It's not that much that you're using. And here's some fat-free sour cream, but I do prefer the light mayonnaise as opposed to the low fat. Okay, there's a little okay. sour cream and light mayonnaise. You want to add the sugar. Sugar. Right. Okay. A little sugar to make us a little sweeter. <laughs> and then I'm gonna use the Nakano seasoned rice vinegar as I always do. To me, it pops out the flavor, but I like the red pepper. Being from Louisiana, it gives a little more uh, Absolutely. heat to it'll, it. We're gonna do three It'll warm me up on those cold October nights. Right, I keep all the flavors of the vinegars in my house um, to use, but I particularly like the Nakano roast, the red pepper one here. Okay, and this is it. Okay, and that's it? And then you just mix it together. You could toss it. Okay. And then we're going to add some walnuts. Just uh, toast to the walnuts. It gives it that toasty, crunchy flavor. So it's a lot of good textures and flavors in here. Now, Holly, can I ask a question? Can you substitute this broccoli for like broccoli rob or something like that? Yeah. You know, as I always say, cooking is creative. And I feel like whatever you have on hand, you can make a combination of cauliflower and broccoli, mm -hmm. uh, pretty much whatever. If you don't have an ingredient, you leave it out. And then we'll throw in some walnuts for that crunch. And you are done. You have a great dinner, and we're going to come back and show you how to serve uh, our Sloppy Joes with our salad uh, featuring our Louisiana beef. And that's right. Holly has a nice little surprise with some Louisiana yams. Stick around. We'll be right back. All right, folks, we're back. Thank you so much for sticking around. And Holly, we have to thank the Around Town Absolutely. TV show for allowing us to use their wonderful studio. Now, you've got uh, a new cookbook, sort of, right? Well, Tell folks about that. right, I'd have my Gulf Coast favorites, which is all your Louisiana and Southern favorites, which everybody loves. You could have trim and terrific Louisiana food. Now, back to what we were doing with our Louisiana beef, our Sloppy Joes, mm -hmm. which I'm serving up. Speaking of Louisiana, that was a perfect transition. Uh, I've used the yam biscuits, and this is one of my absolute favorite recipes. You take yam favorite, biscuits? Yam biscuits, four ingredients. It's made with, you could use fresh or canned uh, Louisiana of yams and you know sometimes you have extra sweet potatoes you just put them in the freezer and you don't know what to do with them or one one cup of mashed equals one 15 ounce can of mm -hmm. sweet potatoes either way Holly I have a confession to make yes. can I tell you my confession 
I guess so. I never met a Louisiana yam I didn't like. There you go. Well, they're actually, they're the sweetest <laughs> of the sweet potatoes. And then I'm just going to sprinkle a little more toasty walnuts on our salad. And our sloppy joe, again, when football season, this is something you can double, triple, have waiting for mm -hmm. Halloween if you need something to serve the family. Because you can put together at the last minutes, have your biscuits in a pile or your uh, bread toasted, and it's very easy to do. May Fruit? I? Yes. Mmm. You know what? It's the vinegar that makes it. Makes it. Oh, it's really okay. good. It's, a, it's that sweet, savory mixture. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, it is football season, and I have to go rah, rah, rah. Woohoo! I think the winning is, the winning team is, or the winning combination is the food. Absolutely. That's all we have from here, folks. Thanks for being with oh, us. Oh, wait. You have to go to my website. Oh, absolutely. You know, I forgot something so important. You can go to my website, which is hollyclegg.com, uh, or my blog, the Healthy Cooking Blog, or... TV.org. Because you're going to want this recipe for sure. Yay! Thanks for being with us, folks. We'll see you next time. Holly Clegg's Trim and Terrific Kitchen is brought to you by the Louisiana Crawfish Promotion and Research Board, Louisiana Crawfish, Ask Before You Eat, and by the Louisiana Rice Promotion Board, Rice, a world of great ideas, and by the Louisiana Beef Industry Council. Beef, it's what's for dinner. Kitchen facilities provided by the Around Town Television Show. As Holly and AJ pointed out, the holidays are just around the corner, and that means lots of holiday meals. Neil Malasson now joins us from the Target on Millerville here in Baton Rouge with this week's bottom line. And Neil, what can we expect for food prices as we go into this holiday season? Well, if I had to sum it up in one word, I'd say higher. Increasing demand for food globally and increasing input costs for fuel and fertilizer are all lending to the cost we pay at the grocery store. In fact, both the Consumer Price Index from the U.S. Department of Labor and the American Farm Bureau's Market Basket Survey both are showing prices over the last 12 months as either holding steady or increasing. The CPI shows that only three months out of the last 12 have shown prices firm and with the rest of the time being month-to-month -month increases, including August through September, where it rose half a percent, the largest such increase since March. According to Farm Bureau's survey, meat and dairy products accounted for 40 percent of the increase in their quarterly survey. And more on their survey, boneless chicken breasts were up 24 cents to $3.33 a pound. Bacon was up 23 cents to $4.41 per pound. And sliced deli ham up 17 cents to $5.43 a pound. On the dairy aisle, we can see that shredded cheese was up 14 cents to $4.70 per pound and whole milk up 4 cents to $3.66 per gallon. Also, eggs went up 13 cents to $1.78 for a dozen. Now, not every item increased in price. Toasted oat cereal remained the same from June at $3.19 for a 9-ounce box. Some meat items even decreased in price, with sirloin tip roast down 20 cents to $4.28 a pound and ground chuck down 2 cents to $3.27 a pound. Right now, there's a flood of beef on the market due to the drought in the Southern Plains states, which caused them to send a lot of cattle to market, and we're just now starting to see the products hit the grocery store shelves. You can expect that meat prices for the next few months will be lower, but look for those prices to rise once again for almost all beef products in 2012. The bottom line is we'll be paying more here this year and into next, and even though their forecasting prices should come down a bit next year, the trend will still overall be higher. Well, Neil, certainly not good news for holiday shoppers. I guess we'll have to wait to the spring and see what happens. Neil Malonson, thanks. And remember, you can listen to any of Neil's reports on the Louisiana Farm Bureau Radio Network for a list of stations where you can tune in or listen online. Just click on over to our website, twilighttv.org, and there you'll find the LFB radio link on the left side of the home page. That does it for this edition of This Week in Louisiana Agriculture. Next week, we'll take you to Pollock, Louisiana, where the nation's largest telecommunications company gives back to Louisiana 4-H'ers in a big way. Until then, you can watch any of our stories online at our website. You know the address, twilighttv.org. For all of us here at This Week in Louisiana Agriculture, I'm Michael Dana. Thanks for joining us, everybody. Hope to see you again right here next week. <laughs>